But of course, the most important news in all of this, the one that really tickles my fancy and gets me all hot and bothered, is the news that nightclubs will be reopening on the 21st of June. Oof. Are you dumb? Are you stupid? Like, how hype is that? Um, I think I mentioned prior in a few other podcast that I was expecting us to be back on a dance floor in a normal sense. I don't mean social distancing. I don't mean dancing in a flipping hula hoop or dancing around a table or dancing sitting down. I mean, like what we were doing in 2019, I had the vision or my idea, my estimation, my guess was that it was going to return in early 2022. Um, of course, you know, uh, the, I didn't account for the vaccine, but that's when I generally thought there was going to be some return back to semblance of normality. But with the vaccine, it's just sped things up again, isn't it? Um, and it's odd as well, because for the longest time, I think maybe for the first 11 months, the government never mentioned a single thing about nightclubs. It kind of just left off the table. I don't think even Boris or anyone in the government actually said the even word, the nightclubs in general. Um, so... When it was announced that this would be part of the roadmap, you saw, okay, this definitely is a step in the right direction, definitely a sign that the numbers are going down, are going in the right direction to kind of allow this to happen. Because as you most people know, you know, COVID definitely does spread from what we've seen so far. Um, this kind of place where it incubates is in, you know, enclosed spaces with not much, you know, ventilation, all these stuff, blah, 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 blah. People perspiring, shouting, screaming. It's probably the perfect place for people to catch COVID. So the fact that they're willing and, and on opening up from the June going forward, not August, not September, June, it's definitely a hint that things are step in the right direction. So this is courtesy of RA. It says UK nightclubs could be open earliest on June 21st, according to the government uh, new COVID-19 roadmap clubs, which fall under... The final step of Boris Johnson's four-step plan of easy restrictions will be among the f last places to open to the public. Monday, June 21st is the earliest possible date, though it's subject to review. Each step of the roadmap will be um, separated by at least five weeks. So, you know, they're giving it themselves enough room, enough wiggle room in case things go wrong, which we're hoping it doesn't, to make changes. But it is encouraging, right? Because, you know it's the last place it was always going to be you know the first place to close and the last place to open which you know we kind of all kind of understood again like i said with how covid spreads but this definitely is a cause for celebration i would say it says here also falling under step four as a roadmap is going to be large events which include music festivals whether these re these return depends on the outcomes of the government scientific events research program a series of pilot events with large crowds occur re reduce social distancing scheduled to begin in april that's pretty cool um, they're probably going to do the same thing that Bas they did in Barcelona where they had this that little test run trial for Primavera Sound and that went out that went off without a hitch I think they had like a thousand or fourteen hundred yeah one thousand four hundred I think so about people in there so a decent amount of people no just distancing or anything just a test uh, before you went in and of course if you you know negative you go if you're positive you could tell to go to hell home so I could see something like that happening in the UK we've got you know a plethora of festivals and promoters willing to probably be part of that little test run and experiment um, that's going to be cool step three says here which will begin no earlier than may 17 will allow for some large events with outdoor events capped at 1000 for people uh, 1000 people so 50 percent of capacity outdoor events for a thousand or 50 percent of their capacity and outdoor seated events for 10,000 or 25 percent of their capacity quote festival organizers only want to return when it's safe to do so says paul reed the ceo of associations of independent festivals he said but if the easing of the restrictions does lose momentum the events are suddenly cancelled as a result it's vital that our sector receive swift and targeted government support and compensate uh, to compensate in addition government intervention on insurance and that remained of critical yeah that's the big i think um, reason why we didn't see glastonbury right um the insurance they couldn't get that all approved before the days and of course you know just logistically putting that festival together is going to be a nightmare but i'm assuming a lot of places won't want to be liable especially you know uh mainly liable you have, I, i'm assuming you're going to get some sort of partial liability insurance but you don't want to be completely liable for it on your own especially when it comes to covid in it but yeah step in the right direction man oh what how brilliant is it going to be to be standing outside of a club hearing the bass rattling through the walls 
as you prattle about in the queue, you know, looking up and down, seeing if you're in the right spot. Are you in the VIP queue? Are you in the general queue? You know, faffing around with your ticket from RRA at the door, getting it scanned, the QR code, you know, emptying your contents into a little bowl, saying hi to the ticket here, or walking up the stairs, or down the stairs, or through the door, or through a curtain. It's going to be epic, man. It's really going to be epic. Like, And again, um, it depends. And I think if you're one of those cheeky sods that were out during lockdown, then you're probably going to pretend like, oh, it's the first time I've been now. I'm feeling great. This is amazing. But for myself, it's going to be so weird because I've legitimately not been anywhere that you could call a club apart from, you know, the Pirate Studio places a few times here and there. But I've not been in anything that will resemble a club this entire time. I think the last place, last time I probably went out, might have been X a while to see God Jansen. I think that might be my last actual event or rave of that kind of extent. So it's going to be an epic, epic, epic um, uh, thing to go back to. Again, it's probably going to be a bit messy. There's going to be a lot of victims. It's going to be a lot of probably, um, <laughs> going to be a lot of ambulances, you know, uh, blazing by as you're on your way to the club somewhere. Probably a couple of scraps, people losing phones and wallets. But, you know, say la vie, man. At least you have some stories to tell in it because God forbid you telling a story of what happened in 2020 in it. Not much really to tell, which is interesting, isn't it? I think. Have it, haven't you kind of thought of that? Um, you have a lack of kind of stories and experiences to share from last year. Most of what I remember has been stuff that's happened to other people, not myself. You know what I mean? You don't really have any moment uh moment uh monumental experiences or whatever that term is right there's nothing i can kind of look back on it and think oh yeah this happened that happened of course because guess what we were all indoors it's so weird isn't it we've been so which has been i, I would imagine a lot of these people especially influencers or mostly celebrities i guess as ones that are always involved in controversy online i'd assume this is probably the best time for them isn't it they probably picked up a bunch of followers because people are just bored and literally legitly want to be distracted from the, you know, the doom lottery that happens on Sky News and BBC News and stuff, right? The scaremongering on the flipping Guardian website and shit. So whatever you can provide, doesn't matter how crappy it is, the other distraction, people are willing to kind of dive on deep because, you know, what's the point of living if all you're living for is just keep hearing, you know, flipping What's his name? Paige Van Zandt, JT Van Zandt, whatever that guy's name is, right? JTV. Like, oh, I can't wait to go back to normal. So I just stop paying attention to the news and politics. It's just like, it's so boring. God almighty, man. Again, maybe it's a football thing because like, what what do we have? What What influence and what can we do to change things? Nothing. We can complain as much as we want. Like, you know, Look at, look at the old BLM thing, right? You could, you go and protest, you go and cry and flipping in front of people in Canberra and London and shit. You put your fist up, uh, you dress in, you know, paramilitary, all black. You harken back to the days of the Black Panther. And guess what happens? They're still kicking black people in the head with flipping, you know, still toe cap boots. They're still pushing old men down the street, having his head hit that, hit the concrete and then being cleared of all charges. Just the other day, I saw another thing. Some guy, other police officer in America got cleared of charges for shooting some woman with a bloody rubber bullet in her eye. And now she can't see anymore. No charges coming against him whatsoever. It's like, God, man, nothing actually legitimately changes. So that's what sometimes I think to myself, like, I follow a lot of these sort of like, you know, professional Politi political analyst and journalist quote-unquote and it must be such a boring life to be consist com to be utterly consumed by all of that shit it's bad enough when you're the kind of person that you know you can't talk about anything else but sports right that's your whole world you don't have any other interests outside of that it can get a little bit nauseating just imagine it when it has to do with flipping politics then it's just like yeah 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 man especially the ones that especially those kind of um, political hipsters that are like you know really up and kind of in tune with what's happening in Ukraine and Hungary and flipping say like, relax you know what I mean relax you don't live there you don't know what the day-to-day -day life is like for people over there they're a different temperament different makeup to you um, you know they come from a whole different struggle point in point in life they've struggled in a completely different way than you have it's just just not even bother you know what I mean it's like you have enough stuff to worry about in your own home than going to try and fix whatever else is happening around the world but you know I don't know man I don't know people have their hobbies I guess and call them that hobbies um, 
And then, of course, the first uh, bit of news in terms of clubs opening is the cause. I got this little, this is nice to see, isn't it? There was a time and place where you'd kind of want to, well, myself and myself probably only, you'd purposely want to keep unsubscribing yourself from promotional emails because they get annoying, especially those ones that are like, oh, 99% of tickets are sold out and it's the Friday before the thing. 99% against your last chance. Like, no, it isn't. We know you've only halfway sold out your event. Relax. But this was welcomed. I actually enjoyed receiving an email promotion from a nightclub telling me that they're going to be opened. And you can feel the enthusiasm from this. This is from the cause um, and Costa del Sol. It says, yes, yes, yes. Boozing and dancing raving is coming back after nearly a year of despair and on and off lockdowns, scotch eggs and generally not knowing what the hell is happening. We're now on the road to recovery and announced two very, very special weekends. We've got here, Costa del Sol Tottenham. Um, Friday 16th to the 18th of April it says following Boris's speech or uh, our fresco drinking is set to return from April and that means last year's hottest social distancing summer holiday resort is back with a twist so that's the one we set on the tables we don't really give a shit about that we've got to scroll down this is the one we want right dance energy the cause third birthday on the 31st of July to the 1st of August it says we are back to celebrate life social contact our birthday and our freedom to dance marking our full weekend for our mammoth return of rave expect multiple sound systems three of our favorite selectors some of our favorite selectors special guests new and old friends together as one on the dance floor to mark the occasion birthdays will start at 10 a.m 10 a.m bro do you know how messy it's going to be on the street with people if they're going to be um drinking and going and getting on it right getting on it on it from 10 a.m do you know how crazy that's going to be Oof. Um, get up and get down bring the energy we're going in early bird tickets are absolutely flying for this grab one whilst you can Oof. it's going to be epic man again I can't wait man again it's just like such a refreshing thing to see those kind of things in your email box again we're back to some semblance of normality and I for one am over the moon